And uh, I would like to invite all the speakers and also uh, Professor William Pichler to start the panel discussion also with your questions from the Slido. Professor Pichler will uh, moderate the uh, whole panel discussion. And after the panel discussion, we will end the block number two. So right now, the speakers and Professor Pichler and the panel discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, honored panelists, um, uh, the presentations have been very interesting, uh, though we are under a bit of a time pressure. So uh, uh, let's try to be as concise as possible and, and still answer the uh, questions from uh, our audience. Please, could you put the questions on the display? I uh, change my glasses so that I can see well. And uh, I'd like to uh, ask the first question, probably uh, addressed to Mr. Miko from the European uh, uh, Commission, uh, from Mr. Hunchaga. Could you shortly elaborate how? E European Union plans to finance the EU forest strategy, what financial tools would be available to support climate smart measures in forests? Please, uh, Professor yes. Miko, the floor is yours. Many thanks, and I will answer, and then I will escape not being afraid of further questions, but at 1 p.m. exactly, I have to be in the next room with so Prime it's Minister. it's kind of a launch pad here. So, yes, <laughs> uh, but uh, this is important question. I have to say that European Union, obviously, has been considering the ways how to support financially the strategy and the main tool uh, from the European side will be different parts of the common agricultural policy. Despite it's called common agricultural policy, it has a forest element uh, and there are uh, different parts. I mean, it, it will be obviously not a, a, a traditional per hectare payment as we are used from the agriculture. But uh, it is particularly from the part of the rural development uh, uh, in the uh, agricultural policy, where uh, quite a high amount of money, uh, which is, which is, I mean, until now it was about 6.8 billion euros available, if I remember well, uh, which can be used, and surprisingly in the past it was not sufficiently uptaken by the forest sector. And I don't think the problem is in the forest sector. I think the, uh, the problem is the, in the national policies. So uh, we need to get uh, the forest element into national payment policies within the rural development because it is, I mean, originally it was intended particularly to support um, uh, the foresters in the areas which are somehow hampered or, or influenced by the nature conservation, but now it will be also to support the forest strategy goal. So this is one option. The second option is the new element, which is called so-called eco-schemes within CAP. And within the eco-schemes, there is an option to support uh, so-called carbon farming, which means basically the, the getting uh, support for those who are improving the capacity, including the forest, um, to uptake uh, carbon from, from the atmosphere. So for that, Again, it is a national responsibility within the national strategic plan, which can be covered. And uh, uh, up to the cap, I mean, we can also add the national schemes, which are allowed and open within the forest strategy, including the uh, national aid for the forest. So there are basically several options. And, and what I didn't mention yet, and then I have to really... Uh, run uh, is uh, the option to uh, combine the private and public uh, sources for supporting forest strategy. Again, this is foreseen in the forest European strategy, so, so, so public-private uh, uh, schemes are also the potential source of financing. So, Professor Miko, thank you. So, from what you said, I understand that there is uh, basically a three-pronged approach. Yes. Um, uh, so that gives uh, lots of opportunities. Um, but thank you. If I may, uh, yes. Professor Pichler, I repeat once more. Uh, these are the options open by union, 
Yes. But it depends on the particular member states and their governments, how they decide in the national strategies, if they include and to do what extent these options into their policies. So this is very important. So it is not just waiting yes. for Brussels, but it is also at the national level. And I didn't mention, obviously, money for the research and monitoring, which goes from other sources. There is money from LIFE, we heard. There is money from the Horizon 2020 Plus. So there are other money for this part of the support, obviously, as well. Thank you for further clarification. Actually, you probably provided also a launching pad for Dr. Gregushka, who may want to elaborate on this also. It has been mentioned that... Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Miko. Uh, and uh, uh, how prepared are the national uh, states, government, probably ministries to uh, use these uh, opportunities that uh, obviously uh, would soon be open in order to uh, pursue goals such as uh, I see in the questions, for example, uh, the promotion of the concept of close to nature forestry uh, mentioned by uh, Mr. Uh, Viesik um, and uh, also uh, uh, by Piotr Bukowski assuming the point is to manage continuous change in forest by ensuring their adaptation and resilience are the policy objectives of the new uh, forestry strategy properly designed whoever would like to uh, um, uh, respond is more than welcome, but I think the 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 link is there obviously be, between the European Union offer and how uh, the countries, the governments uh, would respond. Dr. Gregushka, if I may kindly ask you to comment on this. Thank you. Yes, uh, th thank you very much for for the question for the questions uh, put uh, and. Um, Basically, I can just echo what was said by the representative of the European Commission that, uh, yes, that uh, there are very important uh, forestry measures in the in the rural development policy, in the rural, rural development programs. Uh, forestry is definitely a part of the rural rural areas, important part of rural areas. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, when it comes to the... Uh, uh, financing, funding uh, forestry measures and uh, um, implementing forestry measures, uh, it's, uh, it's always uh, um, uh, the issue of the national priorities. Uh, I, don't want, uh, I don't want to say by this that forest uh, and sustainable forest management are not a priorities, but uh, we have to, uh, frankly, we have to always compete with, uh, with the farmers and it's not always a uh, fair competition. Uh, this is my personal view, of course, uh, and uh, ju just explain, explain, explaining the whole context. Uh, so uh, uh, the foresters are always, uh, um, uh, let's say, forced uh, to look for uh, other sources of, of funding, but this definitely doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, undermine the fact that uh, the rural development uh, policy still remains the main uh, source the main eu source of funding forestry but uh, yeah it's not the only one so this is this is uh, one question um, maybe some other questions uh, put on the on the slido maybe uh they concerned uh, specific issues maybe for for uh, Slovakia with regard to uh, de delivering on the biodiversity pillar, uh, promotion of close to nature forestry at the various levels and so on. So if you wish to pick something uh, that uh, particularly uh, is also of interest for you, um, uh, feel free. In the meantime, uh, we can uh, also uh, address the issue uh, raised by uh, Robert Blasco, how does European Union intend uh, to balance the biodiversity goals versus uh, carbon capture goals? As carbon sinks in the European Union, forests are decreasing due to increasing carbon uh, stocks. So this issue probably is interrelated and is probably also the aim of the project to reconcile this. 
uh, issues. Mr. Janak, maybe, please. Thank you. Uh, yes, our project also uh, aims to uh, evaluate uh, the possibility for uh, carbon sink or storage of carbon uh, and uh, dependence on, on uh, how this uh, is evolving uh, based on or uh, reflecting the, the uh, measures we will be taking or uh, such as uh, the thinning operation and, and other uh, measures. So we will measure uh, how these uh, measures will positively or negatively uh, uh, affect the capacity of the of the uh, forest to to uh, uh, to capture carbon. Yes. Uh, please, Dr. Gregusha. Uh, yes, uh, maybe uh, to address some some questions regarding the the biodiversity pillar of uh, national forest policy. Uh, as uh, I was presenting, uh, the one of the strat strategic priorities uh, of national forest policy is uh, to increase uh, the share of the close to nature forestry uh, in, in our forest. So uh, by 2030, we, uh, we strategically intend to increase uh, the share of, this, of these practices to uh, even to one quarter uh, of, uh, um, of all forests in Slovakia. And uh, this is exactly the way how we uh, intend to address also the, the biodiversity issue, the biodi biodiversity pillar, because uh, we believe that uh, uh, if we want still to talk about the sustainable forest management in these uh, times of uh, climate crisis and bio biodiversity loss, uh, we need to increase uh, the share of the close to nature forestry uh, practices uh, as as integral part of sustainable forest management, uh, and uh, yes, this this is uh, if you look at this uh, in the EU context, uh, this uh, the application of this concept is uh, very dependent on the uh, specific uh, national uh, or subnational uh, even even. Uh, local circumstances so we cannot uh, say that we we now want to uh, apply uh, the close to nature forestry everywhere and because of course uh, by this uh, we cannot meet all uh, all uh, demands society uh, ask for so but uh, definitely the, the increasing the share of close to nature practices is uh, the way how to uh, how to uh, keep uh, the sustainable forest management uh, still sustainable in the future. So that's that's my point. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, from what you have said, uh, it's clear that uh, uh, the rate of uh, increasing the share of close to nature approaches is also very important. And I'm uh, very happy that we also have. Uh, Mrs. Grokiena on on the panel, and uh, I personally would like to ask a question. Uh, how you view, from the point of view of business, the balance between, for example, uh, an, an excellent aspect of bringing like uh, uh, the feeling of uh, coziness, of uh, practicality, of affordability? To the consumers' houses uh, uh, that are produced by, you know, uh, whatever whatever company, and uh, uh, probably everyone in this room is a is a consumer with this regard, and we all try to uh, probably also increase um, uh, the amount of uh, products, uh, the share of the products produced in sustainable way using uh, renewable resources, wood, and so on. And uh, uh, from what I take uh, uh, also uh, from, uh, uh, let's say, simply also advertisement made by companies, they also value the fact that people want to feel as cozy in a forest as they do feel in their houses or flats so, in other words, that the forests uh, are properly managed, 
one tool for that is also certification and so on can you can you probably uh, uh, elaborate a bit on this how the thinking is in the companies with regard uh, to the forest management uh, from what i know the feeling is really increasing that it is also important to to bridge these two issues that people feel well at home using the products but also going out to the forest so in, also in this sense we have a chain of feelings not only of materials but chain of feelings what what would your comment be on this please I think you are touching something absolutely very important because it's also about the well-being of people, right? Yes. Uh, of course, home is the place always where you want to feel good uh, because this is the place where you are coming back when you are tired to relax and really feel good. So you need to create environment uh, in your home, which is as comfortable as possible. But at the same time, of course, that will never replace the nature and how we feel being out in the forest and how we feel simply feeling the nature around us. I mean, we are part of the nature, right? And with the business we are doing, what we want to do is also to promote that. We want our customers to know that we are a responsible company. And we want, uh, as I was mentioning before, we want our customers to be part of that journey. So when they have some product from IKEA that they can feel proud, maybe that they are contributing to saving the nature, that they can feel safe using the product that they know that is coming from the good source, which is not contributing to the bad things happening in the world. So this philosophy, you can say it's a little bit of the philosophical question as well. But uh, from my point of view, it's very, very closely connected. And I believe that it's a must. It's a must as the company. And it's a must for each of us as human beings to secure that we have the forest around us. Thank you so much. For our own well-being. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we definitely welcome the rising engagement of uh, companies, wood processing uh, companies in the discussion that really uh, are concerned and, and pay a lot of attention to the well-being, to the holistic well-being of, of their customers. And just to uh, underscore uh, what you have said, uh, we in Slovakia know that as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the number of forest visits per month increased in this country by 2.5 million a month. So uh, that means like over 20 million over uh, one year and that's uh, hours and hours of feelings of uh, energy uh, regeneration and whatever and we all are interested that people can experience this both in forest and at home. So thank you. And with this, I would like to wrap up the uh, panel discussion because the time is up. The red light is uh, showing on the screen. So thank you, uh, everyone, for your attention. First of all, the panelists and the audience. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Pickler, all the guests. Uh all the online participants. I would like to take a lunch break until 14 o'clock. And you can also select the stream two or stream one at day one where the Prime Minister Eduard Heger is opening the 10th annual EUSDR forum. So uh, you're welcome. Also, thank you guests, the speakers. And uh, we're gonna take a quick lunch break at 14 o'clock. We'll be back.